Hey there, and welcome to this tutorial for the playlong videos of Sweet by the Dave Matthews Band. Now, before we begin, I always want to remind you that in the description below, there are timestamps that can take you to whatever parts of this video matter the most to you. Uh, let's take a look at what you're going to need to do for strumming and what you're going to need to know for chords for this song. I also want to note that the original is in D, but I also made a version in C for those players that can't do, for example, the B minor chord. So this way, if you can't make those chords, you still have a chance to play the song. So we'll look at chords in GCEA, which would be soprano, concert, or tenor, in both D, the original key, and C, the lowered key, and then on baritone ukulele as well. So let's begin with GCEA chords. And for those, I'll be using my outdoor ukulele. This is my tenor. It's made of polycarbonate, and they are available from OutdoorUkulele.com. Uh, these start at about $150 or so, $145, and they even have a carbon fiber mix version that goes up to $205. The great thing about these is that they can withstand any kind of weather conditions. They aren't subject to humidity, getting wet, and the only thing that really can go wrong is if you like go swimming with it or something and these tuners get wet and get rusty. But even then you could probably swap them out if you needed to. So that is my outdoor ukulele tenor. This is called the moonshine color. I don't think they call it that anymore, but they do have a clear variant still available today. Now chords in GCEA in the key of D. First chord you need is the G chord. First finger goes on the third string second fret, second finger goes on the first string second fret, third finger goes on the second string third fret, making a V shape, and that's your G chord. The next chord you're going to need is the D chord. Now, a lot of the books are going to show you to use fingers 1, 2, and 3 on strings 4, 3, and 2 on the second fret, and that works. But I find myself generally wanting to play it with the first finger at the top on the second fret on the third string, second finger reaching over to the fourth string underneath it, and the third finger going to the second string second fret. So they're all still on the second fret, but they make an upside down V shape like a G7. That's just easier for me. The next chord is the B minor chord. You're going to make a bar chord. Now a bar chord requires your fingers to do what a capo does. You need to have a long piece on top that holds the strings down, and then your thumb needs to support that on the top. So you are doing this with your finger, and preferably with that bend in your thumb to help you get a good grip. And you're going to go all the way across the strings on the second fret and find the spot in your finger where that doesn't leave gaps and let the strings make weird sounds. Then you're going to add the second or third finger on the fourth string fourth fret and that's the B minor chord. Now you can support the first finger if you need to, but eventually you might want that finger to make other chord shapes, so as soon as you can stop doing that, your fingers get strong enough, let that one go by itself. The next chord you need is the A chord. The first finger goes on the third string first fret, second finger goes on the fourth string second fret. That's your A chord. Next chord you'll need is the E minor chord. First finger goes on the first string second fret, second finger on the second string third fret, third finger on the third string fourth fret. That's your E minor chord. The next chord you'll need is the D sus4. So if you remember the D chord we just made, right? What you can do is just move whatever finger was playing the second string down on the second fret down to the second string to the third fret. So if you were playing one, two, three in a row, you just move your third finger down a fret. Or if you're playing it like I do a D chord, first finger goes on the third string second fret, second finger on the fourth string second fret, then third finger will go on the second string third fret. Either one will work for you. You're just moving that D chord to make a suspended chord that wants to resolve itself. And then the final chord you need is pretty easy. Again, it's that bar chord idea, and it's actually the same one, but now you don't have to reach over with a single finger. It's just a simple bar all the way across B minor seven. Okay, let's take a look at the chords in the key of C, which are a great deal easier than the chords in the key of D. 
The first chord you need is the F chord. First finger goes on the second string first fret, second finger goes on the fourth string second fret. That's your F chord. The next chord you need is a C chord. Third finger, first string, third fret. Next chord you need is the A minor chord. Second finger reaches over to the fourth string, second fret. The next chord you'll need is the G chord. First finger goes on the third string, second fret. Second finger goes on the first string, second fret. Third finger goes on the second string, third fret, making a V shape. That's your G chord. The next chord you'll need is a D minor chord. It looks a lot like the F chord. First finger goes on the second string, first fret. Second finger goes on the fourth string, second fret. And then you add third finger on the third string, second fret. That's your D minor chord. Here we'll make the C sus4 chord. This is kind of a fun one. You play your normal C chord, third finger, first string, and then add the first finger on the second string, first fret. And then if you ever want to resolve that, you just take away the first finger. And the final chord you need is the hardest one, the A minor 7. You don't make any fingers on the fretboard and you just play it. A minor 7 chord. Now let's take a look at the chords that you'll need for baritone DGBE ukulele. I'll be using my mainland baritone, which has a cedar top and rosewood back and sides. The first chord you need is the G chord. Third finger, first string, third fret. The second chord you need is the D chord. First finger goes on the third string, second fret. Second finger goes on the first string, second fret. Third finger goes on the second string, third fret, making a V shape, and that's your D chord. The next chord, it's up to you how you want to play it. You can either play it with four fingers or three fingers. I'll show you the three fingers first and then the four fingers next. It's the B minor chord. First finger goes on the first string, second fret. Second finger goes on the second string, third fret. Third finger goes on the third string, fourth fret. That's the first way to play B minor. Or the other thing you can do is you can add the fourth finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string. The next chord you need is the A chord. First finger goes on the fourth string, second fret. Second finger goes on the third string, second fret. Third finger goes on the second string, second fret. That's your A chord. The next chord you need is the E minor chord. Second finger goes on the fourth string, second fret. The next chord you need is the D sus4. First finger goes on the third string, second fret. Second finger goes on the second string third fret, third finger goes on the first string third fret. Now in the event that you want to resolve that down to a D, that'd be a difficult jump to do really quickly. So what you'd probably want to do in the case that you want to come back down to a D is to play first finger on the third string second fret. Second finger would still go on the first string second fret like a D chord. Third finger would go on the second string third fret. So there's your D, but then to make the D sus4, you add your pinky on the first string third fret. And then you can take the pinky off and resolve down to D. Either one of those will work for the song. And the final chord you need is the B minor 7 chord. First finger will go on the third string second fret. Second finger will go on the first string second fret. And that's your B minor 7 chord. Now let's take a look at strumming. First of all, I want you to notice that as I play on the GCEA ukulele, I've used a strap. When you're playing bar chords and you're making fast changes, a strap can help out a lot. There are some people that will say that you shouldn't play with a strap. Quite honestly, don't listen to them. If you want to play the strap, play the strap. If you don't, don't. It's up to you. Keep that in mind. Now, as you look at this strumming pattern, which is used throughout the whole song, either at the beginning or when there's a big tempo change in the middle, um, the pattern is going to be this. And I'll play it very slowly on the G chord first. It's going to go down, down, up, down, up. Try it. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Now let's try it in the progression that occurs in most of the song. First we'll do it in the key of D. So if you're learning it in the key of C, 
just wait for a second. I'll go back and do that. But let's do the key of D first. It'll go down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. One, two, ready, go. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. Now let's do that in the key of C. It's going to be F, C, A minor, G. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up, down, up. At the bridge, Dave Matthews does something kind of interesting. He uses the B minor 7 chord in the original key of D, and then what he does is he keeps the strumming pattern kind of going, but he doesn't press down hard. He just lets the finger stay on the strings and mute the sound. So it sounds like this. So it's not that hard to do. It's a little more tricky when you move to the key of C because your chord is open and then you have to mute. So, I mean, it's not that hard just to put your finger down, but in the case of the original key, it's just strum the chord and then just lift up a little bit and it's right there. Whereas with C, you have to go. Then with the baritone, you're gonna to have to do a similar sort of thing as in the key of C. You're playing the B minor seven, and the need to mute the strings. And you might want to try learning how to do that with your pinky. To the A then. And then also, just because the diagram shows that you mute there, you don't have to mute there necessarily, especially with that particular chord. Now the other thing that happens about 2 minutes and 55 seconds of the song is that the entire style of the song changes. It turns into more, even more of a swing and it slows down. But I think this strumming pattern, this down, down, up, down, up, down, down, still works. It's just at a slower tempo. So if we take that same pattern first in the key of D, it'll sound like this now. does work with what's going on there. Now in the key of C it's going to sound like this. One, two, ready, go. So I think that covers everything that you need to know to be successful on Sweet by the Dave Matthews Band. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you next time.